This is GBH's Morning Edition. I'm Joe Matthew. Thanks for spending part of your Wednesday with us. The Boston area is gearing up for a series of rallies today, over the weekend, and in coming weeks following the Chauvin verdict. And as we've told you, Governor Baker is asking the National Guard now to stand by if local towns and cities request help with crowds. GBH Radio's senior reporter Philip Martin spent the better part of last summer on the streets covering the many protests that followed George Floyd's death. He was in Nubian Square last night, and he joins us now on Morning Edition. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Joe. It's good to see you. I know you were prepared to cover a few different outcomes yesterday, and there was calm in the city last night after the news broke. There was calm. There was also a, a mixture of surprise, but also a were not entirely surprised. Uh, they said they would have been more surprised if nothing had happened after the extraordinary video mm. showing uh, a police officer, Chauvin, uh, kneeling on the neck of a black man, George Floyd, for over nine minutes. Uh, but there was the expectation that at least one juror might hold out, and that, of course, would have produced um, uh, problematic results on the streets, it was felt. You talk to a lot of people. We've been hearing your reports uh, throughout the morning, Philip, including uh, many people, including activist Monica Cannon Grant uh, in Nubian Square uh, last evening. I was struck by what she told you because you look around this morning and you hear headlines about relief, about breathing a sigh of relief, about justice, and justice was acknowledged. But Cannon Grant went on to talk about the progress that has yet to be achieved. I think Boston is one incident away from being a George Floyd, a Ferguson. And I think oftentimes we're delusional that it can't happen here, but it happens here. They've just been really good with covering it up. It makes you feel like we're still on the verge of anything this summer, Philip. Well, Joe, her references are to still unresolved cases like the uh, police killing of Terrence Coleman. And uh, it, her reference is also to cases in the past that have re haven't really been fully resolved. That of uh, DJ Henry, for example, of Easton, um, where a police officer essentially got away with what many people believe was murder. Uh, and Yuri Stamps in Framingham, a case that still resonates out there. Uh, the, a man shot to death by a SWAT team while he was on the floor mm. of his own home. Um, so that's her reference. And then of course, there's also recent uh, headlines about police corruption, uh, police union head, who uh, is only now facing some type of, um, of uh, justice in context of the, a, public, um, uh, a, a public reckoning, if you will. And, and, and her, her belief also is that, there, that Boston has not been exposed media-wise uh, to the kind of attention that you see in Ferguson uh, and uh, at, in other places. Uh, of course, uh, you also don't see the level of violence, uh, police violence, if you will, in Boston that you see in many of these other places. Uh, but there are still cases that are still unexplained uh, that re require uh, and indeed need elucidation. Well, I wonder if you think there is new momentum, new leverage following this verdict, Philip, because as we consider the road forward here, I know rallies, protests, marches are planned. There are still three more trials. Three other officers were there uh, with George Floyd. This uh, is far from over, and there are many local cases, several of which you just point out, uh, pointed out that activists want reopened. You're right, Joe. Uh, if you think about lot to last summer, the huge uh, rally downtown May 31st, and then a couple of days later, the Franklin Park on June uh, 2nd, they weren't simply talking about one police incident. Um, uh, they weren't simply talking about the George Floyd case in bringing up uh, in shouting his name and those other names, Breonna Taylor, uh, Armand Arbery, uh, DJ Henry. Uh, they were talking about systemic racism within police forces across the United States. Just as uh, the verdict was coming in, we hear about a killing of a young 15-year-old, um, of a 15-year-old girl in uh, Columbus, Ohio, where police sh uh, allegedly were shouting, Blue Lives Matter, in the background. Uh, so they're talking uh, after the killing. Uh, and so this is the type of uh, thing that activists are trying to put an accent on. They're also talking about reform of some sort, uh, hoping that Biden, uh, President Biden would go further uh, than others, certainly in the past, uh, uh, including um, uh, the former President Obama in, uh, in creating the type of structures that will actually uh, will make police officers accountable 
Mm -hmm. We're spending time with GBH Radio's Philip Martin here on Morning Edition. It's been a long road from the protests last summer to yesterday's verdicts, Philip. In that time, we have seen criminal justice reform move forward on the state level, police reform move forward on the city level here in Boston, and it's now a major issue in the mayoral contest. Do you believe that this has at least become a more serious conversation in mass without, because of what happened? Without question. I mean, you consider uh, uh, former Mayor Walsh's uh, decision, for example, to transfer $12 million uh, from a police budget uh, to homelessness. Uh, to the campaign against homelessness in, in Boston. Uh, consider that all the candidates, every single candidate is now talking about police reform. Um, many people have not embraced the notion of defund the police, but they are talking about some uh, reform the police. Uh, and of course, there are two different goals that articulated by many activists and grassroots uh, folks and uh, many uh, politicians who feel they have to mediate uh, somewhere in the, uh, uh, they have to come together somewhere in the middle in terms of, of, of meeting the demands of the communities to, to stay safe, uh, in their view, uh, and the demands of activists to reform. And in this case, uh, their view is to defund the police, in other words, to reallocate funding. So we've come a long way. The fact that we've been having this discussion, Joe, is, is amazing. The fact that the president of the United States is considering a, uh, a George Floyd uh, bill uh, that was passed in Congress last summer by a Democratic um, majority uh, is uh, an example without question of progress. Uh, but there's also the question of, again, the killing we just saw last, last night in, um, in Columbus, Ohio and others, uh, the uh, shooting death of a young black man uh, just a few miles from where George Floyd's trial was being held That's right. are examples that uh, there's still a long way to go. With that said, here Philip's next report coming up at nine. And I know, Philip, you'll be out there uh, when these groups start to rally again. Keep bringing us their message. It's great to see you again this morning. You too, Joe. Thank you. This is GBH's Morning Edition.